Thank you so much for coming today. It is Sunday morning. This is our morning worship service at Riverside Baptist Church, and it's August the 16th, 2020. And I appreciate the ones that were able to come in person and those that are watching or listening by video or FM radio or whatever the uh, means is that you're listening or watching. Uh, we have started a series of sermons on the fundamentals of the Christian faith. You know, if you want to be good at anything in life, you need to get good at the fundamentals. We talk about mathematics, it's your timetables, your addition facts, subtraction <coughs> facts. You start with those, and very few people ever master the fundamentals. I've only run across a handful of people in my entire life ever who totally mastered the timetables, addition, subtraction, and division facts. I'm serious with you. Only a handful. Because total mastery means that if someone called you at 2 o'clock in the morning and awoke you from a completely deep sleep and instantly said 7 times 8, you can instantly, without any hesitation or secret, uh, uh, or thinking, just say 56. I mean, just instantly. That's total mastery. And to get super good at anything, you have to master the fundamentals. Music is easy if you master the fundamentals. For playing the piano, it's chords. Well, really, for all music in general, it's chords, it's scales, it's arpeggios. That's it, three things. But you have to have total mastery of them. And so, Everything's like that. The Christian faith, we need to master the fundamentals. And so the first one we talked about was faith three weeks ago. And then two weeks ago and last week both, we talked about prayer. And faith and prayer are essentials for a Christian in growing in the nurture and admonition of the Lord and getting closer to God. Today and probably next week, because I don't think I can do it justice in one Sunday, and I'm not going to attempt because it would take too long. We're going to talk about today praising God. Praise. And if you remember from my sermon on the model prayer two weeks ago, I gave you six P's that you need to remember when you pray. And the first one and the last one were both praise. So not only should you have praise in your prayers, but you need to have praise as a separate fundamental of our Christian faith. And there's so many Bible verses about praise. There are thousands, I said thousands plural, not hundreds, thousands of Bible verses about praise. Over one-third of the book of Psalms talks about praise. 65 of the 150 psalms, that's more than one-third, because 50 would be one-third, are all about praise. All about it. And then there's verses in all the rest of them, almost all the rest of them, not quite, but almost. So the book of Psalms itself, which was the great hymn book of the Hebrews, and I encourage you to read Psalms if you've never done it, Joshua just finished reading through the whole Bible from Genesis to Revelation, so he said now that he's finished with the whole Bible, he's doing what I've been doing for a long time and what Sister Jana does, I think, still, and that's read five psalms a day. Monica does it, I believe, and some others, but read five psalms a day and one Proverbs a day. So Joshua just started that. And I encourage you, if you've never tried that, to do it. God will bless you, and you will see how relevant the book of Psalms is and how relevant the book of Proverbs is to our daily life. I want to use as my beginning text this morning, Acts chapter 16. So if you have your Bibles, if you're turning the New Testament to the book of Acts chapter 16. Acts chapter 16. And I want to use that as I begin this morning talking about praise. While you're looking... Uh, when, while you're finding Acts chapter 16, I want to share a couple illustrations with you about thankfulness. 
You know, one of the reasons we should praise God is to be thankful. Because when we think about all that God has done for us, uh, and that should just cause us to want to praise Him. And so I found some uh, good illustrations about thankfulness I wanted to share to you. Even Shakespeare in King Lear, the uh, play King Lear said, How sharper than a serpent's tooth it is to have a thankless child. We should be willing to praise God and to thank Him for all of His goodness. Another cute illustration that I read I wanted to share with you. You might get a kick out of this one. It says, A farmer visited a large city, and in a restaurant before eating, the man bowed his head in a prayer of thanksgiving to God. Seeing this, a young man sneeringly asked, sneeringly asked, Say, oh man, back where you come from, does everybody pray before they eat? And the former quietly replied, The hogs don't. I think sometimes we need to realize that we ought to be grateful for everything. You know, the Bible says that every good gift and every perfect gift cometh down from the Father of lights. And that's talking about God in James chapter 1, verse 17. Also, another thing I thought was good, it says we thank God for the good things that happen to us but many times we fail to express gratitude for the bad things that because of his protection and grace do not happen to us. And, and we need to be thanking God. I'm telling you, we're blessed. We are blessed that God has seen fit so far and I hope continues to for none of our actual members, unless Jasmine has it, to get the coronavirus. As far as I know, if she does have it, she would be the first one. And folks, most of the churches can't say that now. Most of the churches have had several people now who've had it. Brother Charles' church, they, they are meeting today for the first time in four weeks. You know why? Preacher's been sick. Yeah, preacher's been sick. So they had to close church down. <clears throat> because preacher's been all over the church. And so they stopped having services until he got well and made sure, you know, everything was okay. Charles said he's just bitten and biting at the teeth to go back to church. He said, if they close that church down again, if y'all are still open, I'm liable to drive down there on Sunday morning. He said, I just can't go without church very long. So, you know, we've been blessed. And we need to be thankful to God and thank God that he has blessed us, not just for what he's done, but what he's kept from happening to us. Amen. Two men were talking about a mutual friend. One was very critical. The other said, I'm surprised to hear you say that. It was my impression that he had done many nice things for you. Replied the other, yes, but he hadn't done anything lately. That's sad, but that's the way some people are. Yeah. We shouldn't be that way. Yeah. You know, we should be grateful to God for all the good yeah. things that happen. And when someone is nice enough to bless us or be kind to us, we need to, we need to thank God for them. Instead of watching the times that they're not, instead of focusing on the negatives, we need to focus on the positive. Acts chapter 16, if you're there, starting at verse 25. Let me give you real quick the background. Paul and Silas have been locked up in prison for preaching the word of God. And here we are, they're in prison, and verse 25 says, At midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. And suddenly, there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened, and everyone's bands were loosed. And the keeper of the prison, awakening out of his sleep, and seeing the prison doors open. He drew out his sword and would have killed himself, supposing that the prisoners had been fled. But Paul cried with a loud voice, saying, Do thyself no harm, for we are all here. Then he called for a light and sprang in and came trembling and fell down before Paul and Silas and brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe 
on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved and thy house. What I want to draw your attention to here is that Paul and Silas were locked up in prison, not for doing something bad, but for doing the will of God, for preaching and testifying about the Lord God. And instead of doing what a lot of people would have done, which is sit there and, you know, oh, pitiful me, you know, here I am, I've been doing the right thing, and I just have so much problems, and here I am doing the right thing, and now I'm in jail, I'm locked up in jail. Instead of feeling that way and doing that, they were, the Bible says, they prayed, this is midnight, they prayed and sang praises unto God. And the Bible says, and the prisoners heard them. Now, the prisoners weren't right beside them. So for the prisoners to have to be able to hear them, they were praying and singing pretty loud, y'all. They were not ashamed of God. They thought it a privilege to be able to suffer for Christ. So here they are in prison, locked up at midnight, and they are praying and singing loudly praises to God. And when their praises went up, that's when God's glory came down and opened where there was an earthquake so that the foundations of the prisons were shaken and immediately all the doors were open and everyone's bands were loosed. Folks, the Bible teaches us in the Old Testament and the New Testament both that when our praises go up before God, that's when God's glory and power come down into our lives. The Bible tells us in the book of Psalms that God inhabits the praises of his people. God literally inhabits the praises of his people. And if you want the presence of God in your life in a way like you've never had before, you start praising God. You sincerely start praising God and thanking Him, and God's presence will be felt in your life and will be seen in your life. You know, the Bible tells us in the book of Hebrews that uh, praising God is a sacrifice to God. You know, we, we might think sometimes, what can I do for the Lord who's done so much for me, you know? Uh, we don't sacrifice animals like they did in the Old Testament. We don't bring animals in here. and We don't sprinkle their blood upon the altar and all that. So someone may say, well, what can I do? What can I do to thank God or what can I do to show Him my love? Hebrews 13, verse 15. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 15. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 15. says this. By him, the him referring to Jesus, therefore let us offer the sacrifice, the sacrifice of praise to God. So by him, Jesus, therefore let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. So the Bible tells us in verse 15 there that we need to give God the sacrifice of praise. So when we're praising God, it's like bringing a sacrifice before God. And he honors that praise. He is honored by that praise. Uh, back in the book of Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 5 verse 19 I'll back up to verse 18, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18 and 19. And verse 18 tells us what not to do. It says, And be not drunk with wine, wherein is it says, but be filled with the Spirit. And then, if we're filled with the Spirit, listen to what we'll be doing. Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always, verse 20, for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So there it talks about praising God in our heart. It talks about singing to ourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in our heart to the Lord, praising God inwardly, praising God in our thoughts and in our heart and in our mind, 
and giving thanks always for all things unto God. Because as I mentioned earlier, the Bible teaches us that every good gift comes from God, either directly or indirectly. And we need to thank God for every good thing in our life. So many of us are so blessed. And when we... Another illustration that I read somewhere, I forget where I read it, in my background study, uh, it was saying how there's an old adage that if you want to fall asleep, you need to count sheep. And I know some of you might have literally tried that. You know, picturing a sheep jumping over a fence or whatever in your mind, it works for some, they say, I don't know. But in this thing I was reading, it said, you know, for a Christian, it would be a lot better for us to count our blessings. Because number one, when you start counting all your blessings, you realize there's too many to count. And so eventually, and not only that, but when you count your blessings, you realize that if God has blessed you so much in your life up to this point, he can certainly do what? Watch out over you while you're asleep. And it's going to help you fall asleep. It's going to help you fall asleep. The Bible says in the book of Psalms twice, in one psalm and once in another one, uh, in just the first ten psalms, it talks about the, abil uh, the ability to go to sleep and sleep sweetly because God, you know, God's watching over you. And so we need to be, we need to think about that. Thank God for what he's done in our lives. You know, the reason that we need to thank God and praise God, the reason we need to do that, folks, is he's worthy of it. Only God is worthy. I love that song that Brother Mike used to always request. It's one of my favorites too. Uh, talking about thou worthy because only God is worthy. In Revelation chapter 4, I love this verse. Revelation chapter 4 verse 11. Revelation chapter 4 verse 11. I'm going to close this morning with this verse and then next Sunday I'm going to finish uh, my sermon on praise because I don't want to keep you another 30 minutes or so today, but I, next Sunday I will finish my sermon on praise, and then after that we will probably study, uh, talk about Bible study, the importance of Bible study. And I mentioned last Sunday we might be doing Bible study today, but I did say maybe. <laughs> I did say we would for sure, I don't think. I have to go back and watch the video to be sure, but I'm pretty sure I said we would probably do Bible study today, but we're going to actually do Bible study when we're finished with praise, which won't be next week, we'll be finishing up praise, but the one after that. So Revelation chapter 4, 11. We need to praise God, y'all, because he is worthy. Think about everything God has done. Revelation 4, 11 says, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. Now let's think about what he's saying. Thou art worthy, O Lord. See, only God's worthy of our praise. So many times people have a tendency to praise other things. And remember the first commandment is what? Thou shalt have no other gods besides me. You know, when we're praising other things, it's like we're making a god out of that thing. When we start worshiping other things and praising other things, we're putting them ahead of God. We're making a, an idol out of that. And sometimes people praise, you know, money. They praise status. They praise power. They praise all of the worldly things. But the Bible says only God, only God is worthy of praise. It says, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. We might not realize it, but when we're praising God, the Bible says that we need to give to God glory, honor, and power. And you may think to yourself, now wait a second, how can we give God power? How, how he's all powerful. How can we give God glory? He's all glorious. How can we give God honor? Well, the Bible says we do it through praising him. Through praising him. Read the book of Psalms. I'm telling you. David knew how to praise God, y'all. If you want to learn how to really pray and praise God in your prayer, read that book of Psalms. It's so important. And it goes on to say in verse 11 here, it says, 
Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory, honor, and power. And it says why? For thou hast created all things. It's God that created all things. And remember, when God first created all things, they were very good. When he got done with all of creation, he said it was very good. Now, some people interpret that as just man being very good, but I interpret it as when he was finished with all of his creation, it was all very good until man sinned. And then once man sinned, all creation suffered for it, the Bible tells us. He says, For thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. Listen to me close. You want to know why you're here? It tells you right there. You don't need to go think about it any further. You were created for the pleasure of God. Period. That's it. Period. It's not rocket science. You were not created to leave a mark on society. You were not created for your family members. You were not created for people around you. You were not created for the good things that you can do in this life and still be here after you're dead and gone. You were not created for that. You were created for the pleasure of God. To bring glory and honor and power to God. To bring Him pleasure. Now how do you bring Him pleasure? You bring Him pleasure through a lot of the things I mentioned. Okay? But the number one way that you bring Him pleasure is through worship. Worship God. You were created to worship God. And after you worship God properly, then God will touch your heart and motivate you to do the rest of the stuff you're supposed to be doing. Like witnessing, doing good to others. All of that is an outflow from worship to God through praise and prayer and believing that God is and that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. We're going to finish this, our thoughts on praise next Sunday and then the following Sunday, unless I really feel like God lead me elsewhere, we're going to have uh, one or two sermons about Bible study and the importance of Bible study. And I'll try to bring out some ways, different ways that you can do that. There are different ways you can approach that. And uh, I'll try to bring some of those out to you, and you might find one you like that you never thought of before. And so anyway, that's what we'll be doing. We're going to stop at this point in time, and uh, I'm going to move to the piano. And uh, if you feel led to come up to the altar, you may while I'm uh, playing something on the piano. And then at the end of that, I will uh, dismiss this with our closing prayer like I normally do. But thank you all for coming, and thank you for listening. And God bless all of you, and I will be praying for all of you that are in the church and in our church family, as well as all the people who are listening and watching via the video. So God bless you all, and I will move to the piano now.